Good morning, good morning. How is everyone doing? Good morning. Yada, God, God bless you. Diane, God bless you. Good to see you all. Hope you guys are doing well. You know, truly, it's a, at least for, in my perspective, hey, Joanne, in my perspective, it's a good day. It's a good day. Um, but I just want to take a few moments on my way to an appointment. So just want to take a few moments to just talk to you for a second. Um, thank you for taking time out of your schedule to join with me. Amen. And to share with me. Oh, I'm good, Edna. Thank you. I'm good. Amen. Truly blessed and highly favored. And I thank God. Thank God. God is good. All right. So listen, I want to talk to you all just for a few moments on the topic, um, your plans, your plans, right? The word of God says a man plans his way, but the Lord orders his steps. And each of us have plans. Each of us have desires in life, things that we want to do, things that we want to accomplish, uh, places we want to go, things we want to see, you know, um, things we want to gain or purchase, you know, um, each of us have plans. We have plans, right? But keep in mind, the scripture says a man plans his way, but the Lord orders his steps. And, and this is something that, you know, oftentimes many of us will say, you know, we'll say very quickly, Lord, order my steps. But we don't really fully understand what that means, right? Because if God is going to order your steps, that means that just because you plan something, it doesn't mean that it's God's will for your life, right? Because you could, you could plan something and God could be like, no, that's not for you. You know, you could be motivated by the wrong sources. You could be motivated by the wrong things. <clears throat> Sometimes, you know, like, you know, a lot of people don't realize this, that they think that, you know, because something is good or because something is good for me, you know, or, or good to me, let me say it that way, because something is good to me, they think it's good for me. And that's not necessarily the truth, right? Something and someone can be good to you, but they may not be for you, right? Um, something can be good to you right now, but it may not be for you in your future, right? And that's a word all by itself, right? And, and so, unfortunately, <laughs> we are the type of people that um, we are people as humans, right? We, you know, we want to feel like, you know, um, that everything that we desire, everything we want, that we feel is good for us. Oh, yeah, this is what God has for me. Right? Hey, my brother Derek. Happy birthday, bro. Um, and so, um, yeah, we could think something is, because something is good to me, it's good for me. And that's ne ne not necessarily the truth. Um, like, for example, you know, when you look in dietary uh, areas, right, you could have food that tastes good, but maybe no good for you, <laughs> right? You could like, you know, potato chips and cookies and and ice cream and all this stuff like that. And, and guess what? If you got diabetes or you got issues in your body, those things that taste good may be detrimental to you, right? And so, you know, when we think about plans, you know, my plans, when the scripture says, um, you know, a man plans his way, but the Lord orders his steps, right? What I've found, and, and you may differ from me and you may find a better way to do this, but what I've found is that the best way to deal with plans is not to make plans, but to pray and ask the Lord, are these his plans? Are these his plans? Right? Because the word of God says that for those of us who are believers, the word of God says you were bought with a price. Right? And, and being purchased with a price by the precious blood of Christ, right? Uh, he says that you are not your own, you know, you're not, you know, your own thing. You can't do your own thing, 
right? And too many of us, we look at what people say, oh man, this is good for you or that's good for you. Let me tell you something. I remember times when, um, and, and this just, the Holy Spirit just popped this in my mind. I wasn't going to say this. Um, it wasn't my intention to say, but now I'm hearing the Holy Spirit saying, share this. I remember when I was a, a minister. Um, I was a minister underneath a, a pastor and there was a, a, my pastor used to give me a lot of responsibilities, a lot of responsibilities. He, he laid a lot of things on my shoulders, right? And so much so until when people came to the church, a lot of people who visited the church, they would walk up to me and say, pastor, because my pastor would always push me up. He would always push me up front, always push me up front, right? And, um, and I'll never forget this one time, this uh, family in the church who was you know, very influential. Um, they were well to do financially. They had their careers, they were educated, and stuff like that. They um, invited me and um, my family to their house for dinner. And I remember when they invited me, I, you know, I thought something was like, hmm, you know, why are they invite me? Right? I didn't think nothing about it other than I was like, why, why are they invite me? So when we went there, you know, we ate dinner, we talked and everything was fun and it was laughter and stuff like that. And then when we finished eating di dinner, they dropped the rock. Here it is. They, they were saying that they had meetings with several people in the church and they were like, you know, um, we feel, we <laughs> feel that you should be pastor. You know, that you should be pastor. And if you just give us the word, right? then we'll vote him out and vote you in. Now, for some of you, that might seem obvious. No, I'm not going to do that, right? But think about this. In my spirit, I knew that God called me to be a pastor. And so my desire matched what God said. And, you know, and I was like, yo, I want to be a pastor. You know, I, I feel that that's where God is taking me, right? And I don't know how I'm going to get there, but that's where God is taking me, right? So, so when all those things are being offered to you, right? And now you get this proposal, <laughs> right? That, you know, we feel that you should be pastor. It's almost like, hey, this must be God because it's in line with my purpose. Do, do you understand me? Now, maybe you can't understand that. Maybe you can't understand my example. But let me go even further, right? Somebody prophesied to you that you're going to be married. And some dude or some girl comes into your life and this person treats you good, right? Are you so quick to think that that's God? Are you so quick to think, wow, yeah, they prophesied and here it is. Okay, because it, it falls in every area. Let's say, for example, somebody tell you that God is going to make you rich and wealthy. And then some job offers you double your salary. Do you necessarily think that's God? Right? Right? So so here's the here's the point I'm trying to make. When it comes to our plans, right? We may know what we want. And God may even show us what we need or where we're going. However, God never shows you the way you got to go to get there. He never showed you that. Why? Because <laughs> anything that God really, 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 really has for you, right, requires for you to suffer to get it. My God, any powerful thing that God has for you requires for you to suffer. So when God says to you, I'm going to bless you and you're going to be prosperous, Guess what? You got to go through famine. Do y'all remember when God told Abraham, the father of faith, he told him that I'm going to bless you. 
He says, I'm going to bless those who bless you and I'm going to curse those who curse you, right? Um, he says, God, he said, I'm going to bless you more than you ever imagined. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to bless you, right? And then what happened? He had issues with his men and with Lot. And, you know, although he was prospering, then what happens? He went from a prosperous place to when he told Lot, you choose the place you want to go to and I'll take the other place. Lot chose the green places and Abram went to the rocky, stony, uncultivated places. Do you hear me? So in other words, although God said, I'm going to bless you, here he is looking at ground that's not cultivated. Ground that's not prosperous right now. Right? And, and many of us don't know that. We think that just because God says something to us and, you know, and we feel like it's time and we feel like, you know, I've been waiting long enough. No, you haven't. Because you're not waiting long enough until you are able to wait on God and be of good courage while you're waiting. Right? You got to get past the complaining. You got to get past the kicking and the screaming. You got to get past the, the fussing. You got to get past the, the, the negativity. You got to get past all that stuff. And you got to get to the place where you're like, God, whatever you say is what it's going to be. If you say not now, then God is not now. If you say, God, you're going to bless me, then look, however it takes. Because remember, when God gave Abram the, um, uh, the, 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 the promise, I believe Abraham was 86 years old when God gave him the promise, right? Um, it was right before 86, because it was after that, that's when Sarah gave him Hagar, and he had Ishmael, right? And it wasn't until Abraham was a hundred that he had Isaac. So my point is, is that God will show you the plans and he will sometime confirm the plans that you feel in your spirit. But the road that you have to take to get there, you don't have a clue. And, and that road that you have to take to get there is a road designed to give you discipline, to give you maturity, to give you patience, to give you um, uh, integrity, to give you honesty, transparency, right? It is a road that is designed to prepare you for the next level, right? It's not designed to, to pacify you. And, and for many of us, we say, yeah, Pastor, I know because I went through some things. But yeah, when you went through it, were you faithful or were you up and down, in and out? Were you complaining? Were you uh, truthful and were you untruthful? Were you kicking and screaming? Were you whining? Were you frustrated? Were you aggravated? No, you didn't learn nothing. You didn't learn nothing. So, so even though you may step forth, like for example, in that relationship, you may marry that man or that woman, right? But guess what? You are now not prepared as a husband or wife. You're just a boyfriend. You're just a girlfriend. And you become disenfranchised when the relationship is not as cheery as you wanted it to be. You become frustrated when uh, problems and issues of life has happened um, in that relationship because why? You haven't gone through God's steps of preparation so that when you uh, go into that next level that has its joys and its devils, right? You are now ready for it. You're now ready for it, right? And this is why a lot of people don't realize that their futures and you know, the plans that they have planned, they have really sabotaged those plans. They sabotage those plans. Why? Because they saw the plans, they saw the dreams, they saw the visions, they saw all those things, but they never patiently 
uh, went through the process. The Word of God says, let patience have its perfecting work. For when it is done, you shall be complete and entire, lacking nothing. Right? You got to let patience have its work in you. Right? And that means in order to be patient, when you understand the word patient, it means literally, people, it literally means to go ahead and willfully take it. That's, that's what patience means. Patience means to willfully take it. In fact, the King James Version, when it talks about persecution, it uses this phrase. It says, allow persecution. Allow persecution. You have to allow it. You have to, you have to give in to it. You have to submit to it. You have to submit to the process. The process that God has chosen for you. That's why David, when David was in the cave and he had an opportunity to, to uh, execute vengeance on Saul because Saul was defenseless and in the cave and David and his men were there. Uh, and his men said, hey, this is God's will for you. Take it. Take the throne. And David said, I will not touch the Lord's anointed nor do his prophet any harm. Right? And that is because David got to the place where he allowed whatever God would allow to happen in his life, he allowed it to happen. And he trusted God, and that's what real trust is. Real trust is when you can't see your way through. Real trust is when things don't feel right. Real trust is when things don't go your way, and you still believe, right? And, and this is grown talk here, and I see you know, when I just took a peek at the phone, I see a lot of numbers have dropped off. And maybe some people dropped off because most people don't want to hear this. They want to hear about the blessings. They want to hear about, well, tell me how I can get my 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 uh, uh, my future, my destiny now. Sh show me the 12 steps. Give me the three steps that I can line up, right? But those of us who are truly called of the Lord, we know that we are not going to obtain anything of God if we don't go through anything. And that going through means you got to get past the suffering. You got to get past the, the complaining and the fussing and the crying and, and looking for somebody to pray for you and, and to have a spiritual seance around you to comfort you. No, you got to get past that stuff. You got a man up, you got a woman up and say, you know what? If this is the path, that's why Jesus went into the Garden of Gethsemane. He didn't go into the Garden of Gethsemane uh, because he wanted to cry. No, he went into the Garden of Gethsemane because he wanted to pray for the strength that he needed to go through it. He wanted to get the strength. And so at first, he tried to get it with his boys. You know, he took his disciples. And then uh, as he went deeper into the garden, he took his three best disciples, which was Peter, James, and John, and brought them close with him and said, listen, I need you guys to pray with me. I need you guys to hold on with me. I need you guys to stand with me. And what did they do? Because it wasn't important to them. It wasn't important to them. It wasn't something that was, was for their will. So what did they do? They fell asleep because it wasn't important to them. And what did Jesus do? At first, Jesus says, could you not wait with me for one hour? Could you not hang with me? Could you not support me? But then what did he say after that? He said, you know what? I realized he submitted to the process. He realized that this battle that he's going through right now, this battle is not for the disciples, but it's for him. So he submitted to the process and told the disciples, take your rest. In other words, do you. But then, what do you do? He didn't say take your rest and then he got an attitude. Or take your rest and then he walked out of the garden. No. He says take your rest and then he went back into the garden to pray. Why? Because it was now necessary for him to now carry. It was now necessary for him to carry um, uh, this cross. This was his cross. Not the disciples cross. And so, and this is the thing that many of us have never come to. We never come to the place where we have truly submitted to the process. 
<laughs> submitted to the process and said, you know what? This is this is my battle. I'm not gonna make it everybody else's battle. I'm not gonna fuss and complain that nobody knows what I'm going through and, and cry and 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 fall apart and act like, oh my God, my life is such horrible. My life is so horrible. And y'all don't know, saints, y'all don't know what I'm going through. And only God knows what I'm going through. No, 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 no. No, you got to submit to the process. You got to submit to the process and, and that submitting to the process causes for you to gain maturity, discipline, wisdom, knowledge, stability, um, growth. It extends your faith. It builds you with hope. It gives you vision. It gives you discipline, right? Right. That submitting to the process gives you all that. But if you are kicking and screaming and fussing and complaining, it's because you ain't grown up yet. You're still immature. If folks got to still remind you of your responsibilities because you keep dropping them, you're immature. You're immature. And, and the devil that lies to people and tell people, no, 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 go out there. Go out there. It's like, for example... You know, uh, many of you know, I have my own uh, small fishing boat, right? And, you know, but before I bought the boat, guess what? I got the training. Got the training before I got the boat. I got the, the disciplines. I got the credentials. I got all my paperwork in order before I got the boat. So when I go on the water, I'm not looking on my shoulder worrying about, ooh, if the inspectors are coming, ooh, if the marine police are coming. Because I'm prepared. Uh, I'm not worried about the waves so much so. I'm concerned that the waves um, don't catch me off guard. But I'm not worried about the waves because I've studied and learned that the things that you need to watch out for. So while I'm fishing, I'm not just focusing on the fish, but I'm focusing on the water. I'm focusing on the wind. I'm checking the weather. I'm checking the, the wind direction. What direction is it coming from? Where do I, where am I going to fish? How much fuel I got? I'm checking all these different entities. Why? Because of the fact of that once you get the disciplines, then you can handle whatever comes to play in the next level. But those of you who have sabotaged yourselves by... You know, trying to rush the process. You try to rush the process. You try to make the process happen today because I want it today. And some prophet or teacher or preacher or somebody who loves you said, girl, boy, are you still in that same position? I thought you would be here by now. Then you go and you get, they tell you, oh, go here and get this education or go and get that education. And then once you get a little knowledge, you think knowledge makes you ready for the next. So much more. And so many people have failed because they don't know. They haven't submitted to the process. And so just wanted to tell you that, right? You have plans, but make sure you take all those plans to the Lord and ask the Lord, Lord, are these plans that I have in my mind, are these your plans? Or are they just merely mine? God bless you. I love you all with the love of Christ. Have a blessed day in Jesus' name.